So the cops had to be more militarized if they were fighting a war. So they manufactured fear and created legislation to give surplus, surplus military gear to cops, almost like they redistributed the military gear, you know? <laughs> yes, oh yes, America's greatest socialist secret, the military. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to a brand new episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Hey, what you're about to see was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Uh, I've been doing virtual live stand-up comedy shows, uh, and, uh, and some uh, people, uh, people enjoy it, it seems. Uh, so you'll hear them laughing in the background. That's pretty exciting. Uh, so if you would like to be a part of the live virtual audience, you can do so by purchasing tickets to links are in the description below. These shows happen every Friday night, virtually every Friday night all through the summer and into the fall since we're living in the age of the quarantine. Uh, and, uh, and touring is not particularly a thing that's happening right now. So these virtual stand-up comedy shows is, is how I'm making a living, how I'm putting out these, uh, these, these videos here. Uh, so check out the links, see if you can attend a show. Each week it's different material, it's a different theme, it's a different show. Uh, and each week, we also donate half of the ticket sales to a different grassroots organization, venue, uh, uh, activists or journalists uh, uh, that, uh, that, that are more grassroots and more about the people um, and, and that, are, that are just as radical as the topics we discuss in this show. So uh, come hang out, come grab those tickets. This week, the, the, the episode that you're watching, we donated half of the ticket sales to Level Up Studios in my hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. They are a creative playground. They're a community-oriented creative playground. They're a POC-run uh, venue, uh, dance studio, recording studio, and they're all about the community. So we wanted to make sure that uh, that that we were we were able to to help them out in their endeavors as they've helped helped me out a couple times in, in my endeavors as well. I've known them for a long time. They're a great group of folks. So if you want to make additional donations to them, if you weren't able to make it to the show and you want to make some additional donations, go to leveluppgh.com. The link is in the description below. Now, if you want free tickets to come to these shows, because you can totally get free tickets to come to these shows, you can become a sustaining member over at krishmohan.com. By becoming a sustaining member, either directly on the website, on Patreon, or on Bandcamp, you get exclusive unreleased bonus stand-up comedy material. You get early access to the longer, bigger chunks of Forkful of Noodles that end up getting broken up into these episodes. You get the full episodes as, as early access. Um, you, get, uh, you get special little, little merch stuff. You get bonus video content. Uh, you get a bunch of crazy shit by becoming a sustaining member. So go to krishmohan.com, check it out there, and, uh, and and think of becoming a sustaining member. It helps out the show, it helps out a good cause as well. Uh, so uh, yeah, once again, krishmohan.com. All right, now, on to this week's episode. We go on to the next solution, right? We go on to defunding the police and pushing community-driven efforts to eliminate state-sponsored violence in black, brown, native, and poor, low-income communities. And this eventuality is that we probably see communities uh, where we don't need any of the police at all. And this is why the police are so scared of the term defund the police. So, Here's a snapshot of the, some of these budgets, right? Right now, here's the LAPD's budget. The LAPD's police budget is $1.8 billion. The New York Police Department's budget is $6 billion. Philly spends close to a billion dollars on their policing. Okay, and there, there's a bunch of mayors out there uh, that are heeding the call, right, to, to defund the police, but they're really taking half-hearted measures at best. 
Nobody wants to take the full step about defunding the police. Jacob Fry of Minneapolis, the city that sparked this movement, says he doesn't support defunding the police. And the citizens and city council have decided otherwise. Now, one could say uh, that, you know, the rhythm got him. Uh, it got him out of that fucking protest, for sure. <laughs> they got him the fuck out of there. Now, in Los Angeles, uh, the mayor said that he was ready to cut $150 million of the $1.8 billion budget, which would still leave about $1.78 billion in their budget. Because let's remember that a billion is $100 hundred millions. It's an exponentially larger number than a million, right? This is basically like trying to put out a skyscraper that's on fire with a water pistol while the plastic is melting in your hands. <laughs> Black Lives Matter LA called uh, to drop the budget from 44% to 5.7%. That means that the LAPD police budget would go down to a hundred million dollars, which is still an astronomically high number, right? That's so much money. It's about as much money uh, as, as Jeff Bezos makes when he farts. <laughs> yeah, it's just toot money for Bezos. That's toot money for Bezos. Now to understand the justification of why cities would give 44% or more of their city's budgets to the police departments, we have to go all the way back to the 1960s. Democratic President Lyndon B. Johnson started a war on crime, which was fully engaged by Republican President Paranoia, Richard Marion Nixon. Nixon ran on a law and order campaign, right? Promising to wage a war on drugs and crime. And of course, black people. Also puppies, he hated puppies, so he was gonna wage war on puppies as well. <laughs> this guy was not a good person. So the cops had to be more militarized if they were fighting a war. So they manufactured fear and created legislation to give surplus, surplus military gear to cops. Almost like they redistributed the military gear, you know? <laughs> yes, oh yes, America's greatest socialist secret, the military. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of people know that. Oh, a sidebar, guys. Uh, it is important to note that LBJ, a Democrat, passed the crime war over to a Republican, Richard Marion Nixon, uh, just like Republican Bush passed two wars over to Democrat Obama, who made it into seven wars. And boy, howdy, is Trump trying to make it 14, right? <laughs> Uh, Obama also passed on the immigrant detention centers and an ex extensive surveillance program over to Trump. But this is how these presidents let go of their party affiliations to make sure that we, the people, still remain subservient, which is another reason why reform is not going to work, because they just keep doing this shit. I think I messed that up. Yep, I did. Okay. <laughs> we skipped a few things there. Now, since the 60s, the police have been getting more and more militarized, right? Despite the fact that uh, most of the calls that they are actually called for are nonviolent, non-emergency calls. But these cops look at these nonviolent, non-emergency calls as life or death because they are convinced that it is a war against the populace. To the police, everybody is like super high and they're armed and they're also maybe like a communist dragon, you know? <laughs> like waiting to attack <laughs> and this militarized militarization mixed with a paranoid war just leads to cops killing more innocent people particularly those with the same skin complexion as jesus if not darker 
Hmm. Lest we forget, Pontius Pilate was a cop, you guys. Pontius Pilate was a cop. That guy was definitely a cop. <laughs> now look, the use of this militarized force just makes sense, right? Like when you're a child, you know, remember when you were a kid and you would get like a new toy? What's the first thing you do? You take it out of the box and you play with it immediately, right? You don't put it up on a shelf and wait for a reasonable time to play with it. That's crazy, you know? And then you want all your friends to, to have these toys too so you can all play with them. That's kind of what the cops are doing with their over-militarized equipment. They're just children playing with super deadly toys given to them by their psychopath parents, AKA <laughs> the government. <laughs> Now we go to the slide. So as uh, Kamal Walton points out, he's a Philly member of Critical Resistance. He says, at, the dr at a drop of a dime, they can find money for uber militarized tanks, fly helicopters all over the city and shoot rubber bullets. But we can't put people in houses. Now it's not that they can't, it's that they won't. So defunding the police takes away their death toys and lets we the people rebuild our communities and take care of them without waging a manufactured war on our streets. So defunding the police will mean that we start refunding and rethinking the role of mental health, education, mediation, and basic needs in every American community. So instead of call, getting the uh, cops called on you if you're, if you're drunk and asleep at a drive-thru, Instead, we would call the paramedics and probably also your friend, you know? Yeah, yeah get you home, get you some water. <laughs> you know, instead of getting the cops called for a counterfeit bill, we call a fund that helps businesses take care of this sort of things, right? Domestic disputes are taken care of by mediators with books instead of guys with tanks. Mm. Yeah. We can heal our communities and keep building a better future. Right? We completely restructure society. And yes, it means that we have to go through a transition phase with boners and boob growth. <laughs> so, what we're going to have to do. But, it, but if it means that we look at these so-called crimes under the lens of compassion instead of the brute force of law and order, I'm all in for these awkward years, you guys. I'm all in for it. It sounds awesome. That's been your fork full of noodles for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, give it a like, give it that share, and make sure that you're subscribed to this channel to get more videos. I put out videos on a weekly basis. I put out new episodes of fork full of noodles once a week, sometimes even twice a week if I'm feeling kind of crazy. Uh, these are the more scripted uh, history and philosophy based comedy shows that I do in front of a live virtual audience that you can be a part of by clicking that link in the ticket and getting your ticket today. They're only five bucks. They happen every single Friday uh, into the summer and into the fall. Um, not just that, but I also release uh, a show called Road Reflections, which is a more looser, rantier show where I talk about the week's news. I, I do a, a segment called The Dispatch, which is uh, uh, more about current events. It's, it's a little bit shorter, uh, current events, news topics. Uh, that is part of my podcast, Taboo Table Talk. And I'm also going to be releasing some interview clips on this channel as well uh, from my podcast, Taboo Table Talk. So there's going to be a bunch of crazy shit coming at you uh, that you don't want to miss. So make sure you are subscribed to this channel. If you want to become a sustaining member, if you want to grab tickets to a live virtual stand-up comedy event coming up in the near future, if you want to get a, a stand-up comedy album of mine, if you want to check out past episodes of this show, subscribe to the podcast, uh, get emails from me, wh whatever you want, it's, there's, there's a one-stop shop to do it, and that's krishmohan.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N, krishmohan.com. That's a one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. You can become a sustaining member and get early access to Forkful of Noodles. You can uh, it, get, get unreleased stand-up comedy material. You can get free tickets tickets to live uh, vir virtual live stand-up comedy events you can do a bunch of crazy shit on on krishmohan.com so uh go check it out there and uh thanks for tuning in until next week we'll